underway. And they'll bring it out to the 25 yard line. And that brings us to our Papa John's starting lineups. And here's the man of the hour, Max Johnson out of Athens, Georgia. And an Aggie by way of LSU played as the quarterback for LSU against Alabama and had a pretty good game in his first time out. And Aya Smith we talked about, not only one of the top receivers, he can play running back, punt returner extraordinaire, a dangerous man from just about any spot on the field. Amari Daniels in the backfield with Max Johnson. And he'll get the carry. And he'll get a big opening off the left side. It's a nice way to start. Pickup of about nine. Max Wright, the tight end, leading the way with a block. The reason I said the offensive lines are key is both teams can rush the passer effectively. The two edge rushers for Alabama and just about everybody for an A&M can rush the quarterback. Got to give the quarterback help in the run game. Pick up a nine on the opening snap. Now Johnson going to try to run for it himself, and he got there. Stretched out that long body. Dallas Turner had a hold of him, but he dragged Turner for the first down. Yeah, long and strong body. Goes about 230 pounds now. Said he played against Bama, what did he say, 215? Yeah. 15 pounds of muscle. Almost a horse collar tackle by Dallas Turner at a first down for Max Johnson at the 38 yard line. Back the number four, Amari Daniels, short game. Alabama defensively, and they've been playing much, much better the last three weeks or so, too. Dallas Turner already talked about him. Fourth in the country with five and a half sacks. He's maybe not Will Anderson, but he's getting better all the time. Yeah, I think the strength of this defense now, though, is the inside tackle stopping the run if they can stop this run inside then that Alabama defense can do what they like to do matchup zone behind it empty backfield for Johnson here plenty of time down the middle on the crossing route another first down and a lot more Moose Muhammad all the way inside a 30 yard line and you hear the chance of Moose on a 31-yard pickup. Just a very simple crossing route against zone. Moose just comes across underneath the zone, and then bad leverage. Misjudged the speed of Muhammad, and outruns for the big play. Well, spotted at the 28-yard line, first down. So immediately, the offense of the Aggies in Alabama land. Johnson flares it out. Complete another good game. This one's Evan Stewart, his main target this year. I should say both quarterbacks' main target for Jimbo Fisher. He's got a good core of wide receivers. He said it's not that deep, and I kind of looked at him straight. Yeah, I, like, I, thought, I thought all four or five of your guys are pretty good. I don't know who he's been coaching before, but these guys <laughs> look pretty good. We'll say this about the script for AM. People that have been watching them all year know they've scored the first two possessions of every game this year. Both Moss and Owens now flanking Max Johnson on a second down and four. He's going to ride the tailback and keep it himself, and he might have a first down. Going to be really close. Tim Keenan was kind of caught betwixt and between right here from this side. He steps out. Watch him step out, but he doesn't know who to go for, and that allows the gash up the middle. Caleb Owens brought him down just shy of the first down. Think about that, Ness. All every game, AM has scored the both first two possessions, field goal or touchdown on every game. You win a lot of games doing that. Yeah, that's a good script. Start the game. <laughs> Here's a run. Oh, that's going to be really close. It was third down and about a foot and a half. Maybe on Moss is pushed back. We'll see where the and forward progress is. I don't think is. he made it. Good job by Chris Braswell that time. Braswell's known as a pass rusher, but this time he stuffs it then inside the tackle made. S control the edge and allow those linebackers to tackle. Boy, big stop. Can they come up with one more? Fourth down, and the Aggies will go. Three tight end set, and again in the shotgun on short yardage. 
Johnson had to get rid of it in a hurry and it's broken up. I'll tell you, Dallas Turner gave Max Johnson no time to do anything. So a good looking drive is fourth down and about a foot, Gary. Yeah, remember it was stop on third down, then play action pass, and the two stars come through and watch that Alabama bench explode. You know they've been hearing about the AM defense. Right. They got a defense too. That's check our starting lineup brought to him by Papa John's. Jalen Milrow out of Katy, Texas, about 80 miles south of here. And the rest of the offense, they're going to need the ground game today. And that starts with Jace McClellan. Whenever he has 50 yards or more rushing, Alabama's never lost. From the 19, a lot of noise already. First and 15. Full start. Offense, number three. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So remember, Alabama just played at Mississippi State and handled the cowbells, but the cowbells stop when you break the huddle. That's right. This crowd doesn't stop. <laughs> Going to go on a silent count for the most part because of this group that's making the noise. On the ground and going nowhere is McClellan. Second down at 15. Edger and Cooper, who's been so strong as their leading tackler for the Aggie defense, along with Torian York, which is a rarity, a middle linebacker that's a true freshman. Calling the signals, too. Unbelievable. Almost never see that. Number 21 right there as you look at him. Do you remember this, though? The defense in calling signals has to handle the crowd noise as well for a &M. This time McClellan's got a nice gain. It'll bring up a third down and manageable at least for Alabama. As we're five minutes into a scoreless game, Jacoby Matthews made the tackle. Well, this is what AM wants. They want to put Alabama into passing drop back situation. They'll bring in their six man front. Basically, six men will look like they're blitzing the quarterback, and you don't know which three, four, five, or six are going to come. I mentioned a couple minutes ago in the open. The top third down defense in the SEC, third in the country, and third down and eight for Alabama. Milrow going to roll the throw, or no, he won't Spy throw. Spyman got him. Cooper he has another sack. Spyman Edron Cooper, he'll creep up, but he'll be looking for when the quarterback breaks the pocket. I think he's right here. Takes a couple steps up, then he freezes, and he looks, and then he runs him down. And that's hard to run down, because that's a fast quarterback, and that's a great play by number 45. It's on the Butkus watch list, as a lot of linebackers are. And, of course, we lost Dick Butkus this week at the age of 80. One of the greatest players ever. Here's a punt. Oh, I burn it. Not very good. Total yeah, shank. Out of bounds at about the 40... Now they're going to oh keep going keep there it going is right there 44 yard line. That's not good. They barely got a first down from the original line of scrimmage. A 29 yard punt. Nick Saban talked with us last night and said our punter has been really good. Uh, not this time. Well you know that's trying to directional punt of away from Anaya Smith. Sometimes you can kick him off the side of the foot. That's exactly what happened. Art gear at the 44. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing them go deep, challenge them. And I think he thought about it. Now Max Johnson's going to pull it down, get what he can, which is about four I before think, he's run out. I think the old pro defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele, who is back at Alabama calling the signals, thought the same thing. And the safeties played safe. Nowhere to go deep. And Max Johnson makes a positive play out of it. Max goes out around the 40. It'll be second down and six. First game without an opening scoring drive, as Gary talked about, and that's because on fourth and a foot, they were stopped. Here's a fake toss. Johnson picks up two more. So remember, I've been talking about Max being so important. You know, when you lose your starter, and then your backup is your guy, and he yeah. can win with Max Johnson. 
but you know you're running your quarterback you are taking chances a week ago Jalen Henderson the number three quarterback actually warmed up when Max took a big hit in that football game Connor Wigman out for the year with an injury Max son of Brad Johnson two seasons at LSU played in the LSU Alabama game had a couple of touchdowns in that one now we're in a different uniform and a more mature quarterback without a doubt they're down at four and coverage Johnson deep perfect throw first down to Evan Stewart so watch what happens but Petrino on here gives the motion out and the linebacker follows you know it's man to man he's got one on one to the outside throws it back shoulder perfect adjustment to the ball at the end of the play Kool-Aid McKinstry was right there but that was perfect yep Mike Evans like that one. <laughs> at the six yard line first and goal Aggies play fake Johnson throws late and will just get back to the line of scrimmage to his brother Jake. So that's the second time Alabama has handled that kind of play action pass, slipping a tight end in the flat and handled it well. So second down to go. Second drive for the Aggies in this first quarter. And they have moved the ball well, both on the ground and through the air. The biggest play, that 32-yard pass play to Evan Stewart that has them set up where they are. Le'Veon Moss in the backfield. And Alabama not letting him get anywhere. Picked up a yard and a half, maybe. So, again, same thing. The storyline of the offensive line, can they handle those strong defensive tackles, those inside two-gap defensive tackles for Alabama? And that time, again, that time Damon Payne, number 44, made a pile. Pile. Didn't make the tackle, but he made a pile and just forced no game. Aggies have not tried to get it in the hands of Anaya Smith yet. Third down and goal. A four receiver set. And Moss, the tailback, flanking Max Johnson. Johnson stands tall, running out of time, throws late, incomplete intended for Anaya Smith. If it had been on target, it would have been a touchdown. Just enough pressure from the Bama rush at the end. Plenty of time to throw. Good job by the offensive line. But right at the end, right in his face as he stepped from behind, he gets tackled and the ball just goes wide. So he looked for number zero and couldn't quite get it in his hands, yeah, and that will bring out the field goal. I want to give credit. That was Tim Smith at the end. Wasn't sure who it was, but good protection, but good coverage forced Max to wait on the throw. Randy Bond will try 22-yard field goal, and that's his 12th. And then goal to go on the second drive. They force a field goal. That's seven points of missed opportunity so far for this AM offense. Randy Bond to kick. Kendrick Law and Ja'Cory Brooks back for Alabama waiting on it. And they're going to bring it out. Kendrick Law. And Law broke a tackle, got across the 25. Nice return out to the 30-yard line. Jacoby Matthews brought him down. Now it's time for Duke Project Smarter, presented by the Home Depot. Well, a lot of good phases of this defense for Texas A&M, but one of the things they do well against running quarterbacks is play zone. Keep your eyes on the quarterback, and then they zone blitz off the edge to put pressure, but they just have players that can make even one-on-one -on -one plays no matter who's blocking them. Three different ways they can stop you on defense. They have one sack today, 21 for the year. Roydell Williams maybe got a half a yard out of it. Jamar Stewart made the tackle. I mean, you talk about tackles for loss, 11 different players with a sack, and 20 sacks coming in. We had one by Edgerin Cooper already here in the first quarter. That's a pretty stout group. All those five-star guys that we all heard about. They're they were, growing they up. Are, they are. <laughs> no row. Gonna go deep. Man out there. What a catch by Jermaine Burton. That'll quiet the crowd. Whatever you can do, back shoulder, we can do back shoulder. And this one happened. 
deep downfield. Again, good coverage, but that's modern football right there. Jermaine Burton only played eight snaps a week ago. Nick said he's our best guy. He's a little he's bit healthy. A little bit dinged up, but he got the foot down in a 45-yard game. And I'll tell you, Milrow took a big hit when he let that ball go. Roydell Williams backpedals his way for about four. So Milrow, the word on Jalen, and we've seen it too, when he's not running, not the greatest intermediate passer, but he, he can air it no, out pretty I, good. The, the timing part of the pass offense, you know, the precision that we saw with Tua, Bryce Young, Mac Jones, that's not there yet, but you're right. Deep throws, he can throw the ball deep and accurately. Two tight end set, Dupree and Nyblack, both in there for Alabama. On second down and six, just outside the 21. Low snap handled by Milrow, and now he's running for his life, and he's just going to toss it. I don't know if he got outside the tackle. He was avoiding the sack. Is that intentional grouting? Shamar Turner was the guy that put in the pressure They're on They're going to talk about it. Remember, two things have to happen. He has to get outside the tackle box, and a pass has to go across the line of scrimmage. That pass went almost to the first row of seats. And, but I do think he got outside the tackle box. Here's a first big third down for Alabama as they're in scoring territory. Man to man look here. Three wide outs to Milrose left to the bottom of the screen. Jalen throws sideline. Nice. Oh, incomplete. Burton had his hands on it. Couldn't hold it. So everybody has to help the quarterback here, right? Offensive line picked up, did a good job. Route run, pass the first down marker, and catch the ball, and you got a first down. Looks like Burton kind of took his eye off the ball at the end and looked down to see if he got his foot in, and that's when the incompletion happened. The veteran Will Reichert out for the field goal attempts of 39 yards. Number eight all-time scorer in college football history, and that's why he's pretty dependable. Field goals up and good. Anaya Smith would like to get his hands on Will Reichert's kick. He kicked it away from him last time. And burn up the putter in attempting to kick it away from him on a punt formation. Shank one out of bounds, so a lot of time spent not letting Zero get his hands on it. And he had to let it bounce, and he took it on a high. I can't even believe it bounced right <laughs> <laughs> Ruben, Ruben Owens it looked like center field. Somebody's got to take that ball. It's a live ball. That on was a, a high pop -up. very fortunate bounce and a better catch. Watch the reaction by Smith here. Just taps it to him. Didn't know. Oh, it. my goodness. <laughs> that could have been disaster. Smith turns <laughs> off and it right back to him. I got it. You take it. I don't have it. You take it. I was just going to say the one guy they haven't got the ball to so far is Anaya Smith. Well, he just made a big play right there. <laughs> he did. And he almost had a catch in the end zone on their last drive before their field goal. And he'll get his hands on it sometime before the day is done. Amari Daniels. Boy, driving those legs, but that's the hardest two yards you're going to see. Again, that inside rush defense. Again, it was Tim Smith refusing the style of this Bama front is a kind of a two gap system. They take their blocker on and they just kind of stuff them right there. And then they look. They don't get blocked out of the play, throw them off, and make the tackle. Wonderful play. No kidding. Tim Smith's been around a while, and he's playing really good the last three weeks or so. Johnson on second down, getting pressure again, had to get rid of it. Well, I'll tell you, whiff that time by that front offensive line. Deontay Lawson back in there, yes, and he's been in Johnson's chin all night. Deontay Lawson looks like a defensive end. He plays inside linebacker. Here he is right here. Watch him just run right through the block of the run. That's not a very good block. No, it's it? not. Mari Daniels said it's easier to run the ball than block this guy. <laughs> Ooh. Nowhere to go with that one. Very fortunate. Back-to-back -back plays. Really fortunate plays by the A&M team. Max Johnson's head hit the ground hard on that delivery. So it's third down and eight. Three receivers to the top of your screen for the left-handed Max Johnson. Looking that way if he has time. Dallas Turner first. Then he got around Austin. Now he's going to keep it, but he's not going to get a first down. And I thought he should have stayed outside there that time. 
or at least set up the block a little bit more and he tried to stretch the play as he gets wide. Not quick enough to get past all the, you know, the pursuit of that Bama defense. That was a Boigby that got the second wave of pressure on him. And he's explaining things to Coach Fisher on well, the sideline. The, 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 the stars for Alabama, Lawson, Turner, and Braswell have been playing football here Yes, so they far. have. Kool-Aid McKinstry waits on the punt of Constantino. And has to call for a fair catch. Oh, oh and he dropped it. But he got on top of it. And a flag down as well. I don't know if Kool-Aid took his eye off it at the last second, but he had to one hop it and actually lost about a yard on the return. I know he looked down to see if he should fair catch, but he had plenty of time to still get his eyes back up there and just misjudged it a bit. Let's see what the flag's about. And one of the officials does not have his cap on. That, that usually means that a, a gunner went out of bounds. Right. Number nine of the kicking team went out of bounds on his own and came back. Five-yard penalty will be tacked on from the dead ball spot. First down. So what happened is Jade Walker, number I think it was Jade Walker, number nine, ran out of bounds to avoid the block and took advantage of a field that's not that wide. <laughs> it's only 53 and a third. That's exactly. all you got to deal with. Let's see if we can take a peek at this. He's up this area. I didn't see it. I didn't either. <laughs> at any rate. I didn't see it at all. <laughs> Alabama will start at the 34-yard line. Jalen Hale and Jermaine Burton, the wide receivers. Milrow is going to go deep again. And Burton again. No, not quite. Good coverage, boy. Stuck to him was Josh DeBerry. Well, Those two have been going at it the I, whole first quarter. I don't think there's any doubt that Tommy Reese, coordinator for Alabama, feels he's got a matchup there that he can take advantage of with Burton against Josh DeBerry. Second attack, second time a jump ball. Good job by DeBerry, but they have attacked him twice. Tommy Reese. Leaning forward there without the hat. Our offensive coordinator for the Tide on second down and 10. McClellan's going to be knocked for, down for a loss of about three. Good job, Josh DeBerry forced it at the beginning. So this defensive line, as Ness told you, like three or four five-stars, high school five-star recruits, and now they're college five-star players. Fast twitch, jump off the tape, tough to block one-on-one, -on -one, and when they bring the exotic blitzes, it even makes it harder on the offensive line. This is gonna be hard on Alabama, third down and a dozen. Came in as 46% on the season on the third down conversions. There's that six man front that they always feature in these situations. No row. Deep sideline. Got it to Burton this time. Yeah. And it's again DeBerry who yeah, was trying to stay with him. That's the matchup that Tommy Reese has designed. One on one. Watch the great route by Burton this time. Watch his footwork come inside. Boom. And then beats him to the sideline and. A perfect throw. A pickup of 21. Jermaine Burton, who came over from Georgia prior to last year. So if you go by a guy twice, usually you can get the out underneath yeah. him, right? Now, illegal procedure. I think it's going to be the freshman Proctor, number 74. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. That puts Alabama back on their end of the field. Second time they've had a false start. First snap and then this one. Yeah, here it is right here. Watch the little movement. The tap of the, the silent tap of the guard to the center is not meant for the tackle to move. It's for the snap first. Then the tackle moves. The keeper. Not even back to the line of scrimmage for Milrow. Edger and Cooper had some big plays already in the first quarter that will come to a close. Watch the little things right here. Caden Proctor. Quarter. And the second down at 15 for Jalen Milrow and company. McClellan gets out of the backfield. 
Milrow going deep again. Man wide open. Got him. Isaiah Bond, touchdown. 52 yards on the strike, and nobody back there with Bond. Look at the nice kind of dig and go. AM only rushed three players. The route is run here and then go off the secondary level, and it's gone. The reason, though, time to throw the ball. AM spied on the play. That means they had three rushers, seven defenders, and one guy doing nothing. Just watching the quarterback in case he ran. Second long ball, one to Burton. This one 52 yards for a touchdown on Will Records. Extra point is up and good. That's the danger of the spy. When you have a running quarterback, you got one guy not rushing and not covering. In the Flynn Milrose career at Alabama, a 52 yarder to Isaiah Bond has put him up 10 3. Ruben Owens brings it out of the end zone. Probably shouldn't have. Got to the 20, though, and that's where the Aggies will go to work, and we go back to the touchdown game. Remember earlier the motion that was used by AM. Well, this time motion goes, but no follow this time because of the spy. Kind of a zone matchup, not very well. The safety gets caught on an, an in and go. A little different look, but motion used by Tommy Reese to declare the defense. When the linebacker didn't go, he knew it was three-man rush, and they took advantage of it. We saw a couple of long balls, one to Burton that set up the field goal, and then that one the touchdown. And Alabama's got 116 passing yards so far. Now it's Max Johnson's time to go back to work for the Aggies offense. Max Wright, the tight end in motion. Johnson waits, and he's going to go deep. Got a man wide open as well, and I have Smith. And Smith dropped immediately, but he's got a big gainer, and they'll move into Alabama's end of the field. Well, you heard Brad call it when he was calling the play-by-play. -play. He said, Johnson waits. That's the key. He had the time to wait for Anaya Smith to cross the field and deliver the ball. Game plan's basically the same for both teams. Yeah. Pick up a 34 to the 45. Let's see if that kick starts the Aggies offense. Le'Veon Moss broke one tackle, but not the second one. Picked up maybe two yards. And Jenny tucked during the end of the first quarter and going into the second with Coach Saban. Coach, your defense has made some key stops. How have you liked their execution in the first quarter? Well, you know, we didn't play, you know, great. We gave up a couple plays, but, you know, I think get into the rhythm of the game and see how we're doing. And uh, I think the big thing on offense is, you know, we got to control the line of scrimmage better. We're not able to run the ball, so we're creating too many negative plays. Thank you, Coach. When you can't run, throw. It's working. <laughs> Second down and eight. Again, Moss in the backfield with Max Johnson and AM time. And a second down and eight. From just outside the 43. Johnson waiting too long this time. Down he goes. And it was Justin Aboigby. So there's three types of sacks. You know, when the offense defensive line just kind of overpowers their player. There's coverage sacks, and then there's kind of like quarterback waiting too long sacks. <laughs> I think quarterback waited too long on that one. Me, me too. Second sack of the year for a Boyd B. Big number 92. And now it sets up a long yardage situation. Third down and 13. So you need to get that route so he didn't have this long yardage. Get rid of it in second down. Johnson steps up in the pocket. Looking to throw. Throws incomplete on the sideline. And it was Anaya Smith. Felt like he stumbled right on the end of the play this time as he got ready to throw the ball. Eh, not yeah, really. Kind of threw it outside. Had a chance. Could have been caught. Really nice attempt by Smith. Yep. Lays out for it. Could have been a great play by Smith, right? So punting situation for the Aggies. Nick Constantino in his fifth year. And Kool-Aid McKinstry back around the 10-yard line. Fair catch. Getting everybody out of the way as it goes out of bounds. Not a very good kick. 
McKinstry forced the same kick, just a little too wide that time. <laughs> Andre, Damian Harris, Calvin Ridley, O.J. Howard. That's just on offense. Uh -huh. I got nine guys on defense that are in the NFL, too, by the way. This run goes nowhere for Roydell Williams. Jenny? Yeah, I asked Jalen Milrow if he talked with any former Alabama quarterbacks to gain perspective, and he told me he talks to Bryce Young and Jalen Hurts multiple times a week. He described Jalen as a big brother, Bryce as his homie. He told me that, of course, they have incredible insight on the game, but they're also just guys they can talk to about everything. Bryce Young's advice to Milrow? Stay calm, cool, and collected, and always fall back on your level of training, guys. Those guys are just like Gary and I. Yeah, but he's like my big brother and my homie all in one package. That's right. Stuck oh, with me. Only he acts like he's 12 most of the time. I'm just kidding. Throw, complete, diverting. That's only when we're out in public. No, I, I, I'll take it. Embrace it. <laughs> so Burton with another catch. I tell you, really set up well early in the game, going deep a couple of times, and now they're able to use Burton on the outs. That's the fourth target so far in this game for Burton. Alabama went backwards on their first drive and then got a field goal and a touchdown. And trying to add to it on this march. They're down in three from their own 23. And flags fly. Gonna have a false start. False start. Offense number 57. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. So a little rotation. Elijah Pritchard is in there now at left tackle. Played about 15 snaps a week ago in there. And he moves this time. Yeah. And that'll get the crowd even more fired up on third down and eight now to see if they can force another penalty marker. Well, and, and this is the story of the game. If this Alabama offensive line can pass block this pass rush on third down, that is going to be bad news for that AM defense. A bunch set of receivers to Milrow's right on third down and eight. Maybe a corner blitz coming. Milrow, and it swallows him up. Fadil digs the veteran. Another sack. And no spying on this play. They're coming after the quarterback. Nice cross here inside and then the tight the defensive end digs comes underneath it. You rush inside and then follow around beautifully designed blitz. That's a scheme blitz right there. They overpowered the offensive line. Diggs first sack of the season and a loss of eight. But we've got a flag down after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct offense number three. Taunting. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal. Fourth down. I don't know why Jermaine Burton would be taunting after getting his quarterback getting sacked, but there it is. Talking to Damani Richardson. Yeah, I, I guess know. that's it. That was it. It was too late. Flag. That won't go over well on the sideline. It shouldn't. I mean, you're trying to win a championship here. And now Burnup's buried in his own end zone to punt. Great punt. This time he got a hold of Holy it. Cow. And Ia Smith those on the other end. One hot, the 23. One man misses. And now more do. And Ia Smith heading to the edge. Smith down the sideline. And Ia Smith still on his feet. That's what he is so dangerous for. And he just ripped off another long punt return. Well, just like last week when the one hop on the punt return produced a touchdown, it almost did it again. It seems like the one hop kind of throws the coverage team off, picks it up, and then he goes. Last week, warning. he went 82 Texas yards. It is their first of the game, first down. So there's not a flag, it's just a warning. Wow, he's fun to watch in the open field. And he was ready to do it. He, we talked about how he bobbled one a week ago. This is how it looked. Look familiar? <laughs> I think he's got to just put that in his repertoire every time. <laughs> Hard to do, but very effective. And that one he took to the house against Arkansas. And then moments ago, just about the same thing. And makes the first couple guys miss. And then he's electrifying. In the open field. So this is the third time this AM offense has been on this side of the field with opportunity to get three or seven. Only have three points so far. 
Great place to set up shop at the 22 yard line. Mac. To this year. Uh oh. Penalty flag on the celebration. Nice design play. Roll out right, tight end delay back across the field. We'll get the call here after the 22 yard touchdown pass. So, one play drive after the punt return. Only took eight seconds to get in the end zone. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 13, defense number 13. Correction, it's offense number 19. Those fouls will cancel off. So Malachi Moore and Jake Johnson getting in a little scuffle at the end of the play. So to be a little more accurate, instead of tight end delay, it's H-back delay, and the number 19 is a pretty good tight end in this conference. One for Georgia, and now one's for Texas A&M. So the brothers Johnson that we talked about and Jenny told us about earlier on our hometown connection. Yeah, and that, that really was on, I think, that time instigated by Jake. Extra point is up at 10 apiece. That had to be fun for the old quarterback to watch that one, didn't Absolutely. it? Old Brad at this game? Yep. And quarterback comparison so far, very similar, really. Some long balls, a touchdown each. Yep. Mill row, five out of eight. Max, six out of 10, 123, 125, no interceptions. Still think the worry point is exactly what Nick Saban told Jenny at the end of the first quarter. We're not running the ball well. Right. Five running back runs for only 11 yards. That means Milrow has to produce, and so far, two sacks for him for 14 yards. Can they find a running game to help out the quarterback? Alabama came in averaging 168 yards on the ground, but a lot of that's Milrow yards. Let's see what they dial up here at the 25. Two tight end set, Milrow off the play fake. Gonna go out incomplete intended for McClellan. Let's check in with Jenny. Alabama's punter James Burnup, he came off the field just a few minutes ago, went into the injury tent for two minutes, now is in the locker room. He was grabbing at his right upper thigh, that hamstring area. Team personnel telling me it is a lower body injury and I will not have any more information until after the half, guys. Yeah put a dent in their punting game for sure. I don't know if Will Riker to be the punter. We'll wait and see. Yeah, one good news for Alabama so far, the snap problem <laughs> has not been a problem so far. <laughs> Seth McLaughlin, the snapper, got it clean to Milrow. Deep middle, in and out of hands of Nyblack. Nyblack is the go-to being treated as a wide receiver by A&M, but is a tight end by formation for Alabama. Another one of those, you know, athletic tight ends that this conference has. That was catchable. Would have been a tough catch. Yeah, would have been a tough catch. And third down and ten. Here we go. Let's see if we see any more spy in this game. I think they're going to keep rushing. Everybody's in their track stance, but yeah. the flag flies and Move stop again. the play. Think movement again. J.C. Latham, I think, this time. Yep. False start. Offense, number 65. Five-yard penalty remains third down. One of the things that Nick Saban told us last night was that we worked very hard on the silent count to take the crowd out of it. So far, I think that's their third. What is it? At least third is their fourth pre-snap penalty. Wow. Four of their five so far. Third down at 15. And now thunderous noise from the crowd here at Kyle Field. Tyler Booker is doing his best out there to direct that offensive line where everybody's coming from. Number 52 left guard is calling out all the signals. No row in trouble. Now going to try to run out of it, and he can't. They get to him again. Just too many Aggies 
Defensively, Diggs finally brings him down. That time it was Bryce Anderson coming out the slot. They're going to come off the slot here and then bail inside. Another look, different look in this third down package. Now listen, I saw two years ago, Bryce Young had trouble with this same package. When you get the third and long, they're coming from all different angles, and they gave him problems with the same look. It's happening again. And Will Riker will punt here for Alabama from his own goal line. Pretty good kick for a guy that doesn't spend a lot of time punting. Play action pass for a touchdown. What does Petrino call here? Maybe on Moss in the backfield with Johnson. He fakes it to him. Max backpedaling and lofting one and whoop in and out. Uh. Against that may be hung. I know. I was like, oh no, no, no. And then you look down, and Moose Muhammad had a chance to catch it and went right through his hands. <laughs> you know, we talk about uh, Alabama not being able to run the ball, but the tailbacks, the, the elite tailbacks for AM are not running the ball no. either against this defense. Second down to 10. Alabama thinking about a blitz and they're going to bring it a run blitz and a couple yards and that's it there's just been no ground game really by either team right now we've got a quick second here to test your knowledge with today's Aflac trivia question which is name the five players from Alabama and Texas A&M to win the Butkus Award as the top linebacker you can't do too much Butkus this week can you? no you can't my favorite player as a kid yeah, uh, and a chance to spend in one week. I spent time with Ray Nitschke, Dick Buckus, and Tommy Novus. I was like, it was dreamland. That was a good day. <laughs> They're down at eight. Another blitz coming off the edge for Alabama. Johnson stands in, incomplete, no flag. Yes, there is a flag. Okay, there it comes. Contact in the middle of the field. That'll be a first down. I think Jalen Key got his arm hands on him just as the ball was thrown. Pass interference. Kind of pulled him from behind. Defense, number six. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. So all-out blitz, man-to-man -man coverage. You got your safety, Jalen Key, on an inside route, and uh, I think he grabbed on to save a touchdown throw. If you don't get to the quarterback when you rush six players, you could have problems. Yep, the little tug, and that produced the fall on the play. Max Johnson took another shot too when he let go of that ball courtesy of that all out blitz. So first down by penalty. Here's the give to Owens. Bring up second down here with just under eight minutes to go in the half. Dick Butkus never played in a playoff game. The Bears had Dick Butkus and Gail Sayers in the same draft after an All-American career at Illinois, both playing both ways, center and linebacker, uh, eight-time pro bowler, maybe the meanest man ever <laughs> to play the game. I, I got a curious question about you. Who went to... Moss and Owens in the backfield with Max Johnson, second down at six. And this is going to be... A loss for Ruben Owens. I'll tell you, Dallas Turner is on fire on the edge right now. Terry and Arnold did on the stop as well. Can I handle this guy, number 15, who said, is he the best player? And right now he's the best player on that defense. They had a guy 31, Anderson, a year ago, but this time 15's taken over. Yeah, we said to Max Johnson yesterday, at least you don't have number 31 chasing you. He goes, yeah, but I, I got, got 15. <laughs> yeah, I got two of them. 15 and 15 41. And 41. Third down and 10. Alabama thinking about bringing an extra rusher. They will. Johnson throws complete on the run. First down, Moose Muhammad. And Moose gets inside the 25 yard line to the 24. That's was a three man line, but only a four man blitz. So the two guys come inside, but one of the defensive ends drops. So only four men. Handled well by the offensive line. We know who else handled it well. Max Johnson. Right in his face was the rush, and he let it go. Pickup of 18. Now back to the ground. Still, it's two yards at a time, maybe three. That throw kind of reminds me of Zach Calzada in that game. Remember the throws he made yeah. with the pressure in his face? Boy, he took one shot. We didn't think we'd see him again exactly. in the game. 
That was two years ago in the upset of top ranked Alabama here. That's what the sledding has been like on the ground. Alabama with the sacks minus 10. AM only 35. But they're in scoring territory again here in the second quarter with just under six minutes remaining. Second down, eight from the 22. The toss on the edge. Good blocking on the edge. There's their best run of the day. It's going to get a first down before Le'Veon Moss is knocked backward. Yeah, that's the same play that Georgia used a week ago. This time, Max Wright, number 42, is going to get outside. And Jake Johnson is going to get his block. A little toss sweep from that shotgun formation. Used to be from the eye formation. But basically the same thing. Max Wright, who got a really nice block on Deontay Lawson, and Lawson still ended up making the tackle, but not before a first down at the 13 yard line. In the red zone for the Aggies. Five runs, two passes. It's covered 40 yards. Another pass. That's incomplete. Maybe a little miscommunication on the route there. Kool Aid McKinstry was closer to it than Evan Stewart was. Yeah, I, I think uh, Evan Stewart said. If you called the stop route, there's no way I could stop because he's got me covered. I got to go deep. So no back shoulder throw available. McKinstry plays perfect coverage. Number one playing on number one. From our pylon cam as a mouthpiece hits the goal line. Second down and ten. Ernest Cronover in the backfield now. They've thrown it to him twice this year, both for touchdowns. They uh -huh. keep it on the ground here. Tim Smith will make the tackle. Basically nothing between the tackles for either team to run the ball. Great SEC defense, yep. right? That's what both teams were looking for, or Alabama fans were looking for from their defense. They're getting it, and we've seen it ever since the Miami game on the other side for the Aggies defense. Name of the game, could an offensive line poke holes in that defensive front. Remember, there's a backup quarterback playing for one team and a new quarterback, Jalen Milrow, who still hasn't found his comfort in just being a drop back passer. Four wide outs for Johnson here and I Smith way down to the bottom of your screen as one of the biggest plays of the day as a punt returner. Johnson throws a Smith to the one yard line. Well, Alabama brought six people that time. They blitzed. But they disguised it a long time off the slot. Here's the blitzer right here coming in. Time picked up. Beautiful job by that offensive front for AM. Gave Max Johnson time to hit the one on one coverage. So, first and goal. Two big plays by Anaya Smith. And now everybody bunched in tight from the one yard line. Johnson under center. The give to Moss. Touchdown, Texas AM. Avion Moss in the end zone for the third time this year. Well, we had the interference call and then the two third down conversions. One great throw by Max Johnson, staring the rip blitz right in his face. That last one, the offensive line picked up all six players and allowed the pass to be made. Bond in for the punt after up at 17 to 10. Aggies at home trying to get Alabama for the second time in three years. Alabama will let this go and bring it out to the 25 yard line. A few minutes ago. We asked you the Aflac trivia question in honor of Dick Butkus, which was name the five players from Alabama and AM to win the Butkus Award. And the answers Derek Thomas and Rolando McClain and CJ Mosley and Reuben Foster, Texas AM, Von Miller, who yeah. you think of as a defensive man. Right. I, would, I only got one of those. You know what? <laughs> we, we were talking about, you and I were guessing that win. I looked it up. He lost the Butkus Award by one oh, vote. Oh, man. <laughs> Remember those days with the wrecking crew? Oh, my that goodness. Win. Then he went on to play for the Cowboys. Yeah. Now, this AM defense is sort of like the wrecking crew in the last three weeks. Jalen Milrow on first down completes it out. Jermaine Burton, he'll tiptoe out of bounds, a pickup of 13. Well, again, Jermaine Burton is the go to guy with targets. 
coming into this game, Jermaine Burton had only been targeted 13 times all year. He's got five of them already targets in this game. The two deep balls early has opened up the easy passing lane for Miller over the outside. After back-to-back -back three and outs, this Bama offense has a chance to put points on the board and get the ball in the second half. They get the kickoff to open the third quarter for sure. But looking for more points to tighten this one touchdown game up. Milrow throws and got it again to Burton. Yep. You know, one of the things I talked about with Coach Saban last night is, do you have a go-to receiver? You know, do you have the Julio Jones, Amari Cooper, Kelvin Ridley? I know they had all the bunch of the NFL guys right. when they could throw it to any of those guys before, but back in the day when they ran the ball, they had the go-to receiver. Looks like today, Jermaine Burton could be that guy. Yep, and he said Isaiah Bond might turn into that kind of guy, and he has a touchdown catch today. Low snap there, Milrow handles it. Jalen on a crossing route, complete, and getting what he could was Kobe Prentice right in front of Coach Saban. Impressive drive, though. And they still have their full complement of timeouts and two minutes to work with. And now, from this point on, the clock will stop temporarily on a first down as we're under two to go in the quarter. Second down and five. Roydell Williams with Jalen Milrow in the backfield, but the ground game has been non-existent for both teams. Milrow throws high, intended for Bond incomplete. And Josh DeBerry was covering. Yeah, he said that's me. You know, he's like one of those guys, you know, he can he can drive the ball 300 yards, but has trouble with those five foot putts, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the short passing game is his challenge. That's his next step of improvement. Throwing the ball downfield, he looks great to me. Now the biggest third down of the day. Will Reichert's field goal range is at its edge right here. They'd like to get it closer. They'd like to get seven. Empty backfield. Man the man key. Here they come. And there was whistles before the snap. Could it be their fifth motion penalty? Snap infraction. Offense. Wow. Number 56. Five-yard penalty. It's been almost the story of the first half. The long passing in combination to Burton is one part of it, but their fifth pre-snap penalty has slowed this offense down. Seth McLaughlin with the double clutch yes, on the did. snap. And that cost him this five. Talked to Seth's dad last night. He says he's had so much trouble hearing because it's a different kind of cadence and clap from Bryce Young to Jalen Milrow. And that one you can give the 12th man, I think. Third down at 10. Jalen Milrow trying to scramble out of trouble. He's not going to be able to. And a bad landing to Walter That's Nolan this time. That's the fourth sack of the game. Remember, the last two games, AM has put seven sacks and seven sacks. They're right on schedule. Sure are. As dangerous a rudder as Jalen Milrose, there's just too many Aggies swarming around him. Yeah, and Walter Nolan was holding on when he got hit. As you called it, that was a dangerous play. It looked like Milrose's leg got twisted just a bit. And Will Riker was hoping that he would get a chance for a long field goal. Instead, he's got to come in for Burnham to replace him to punt. And Anaya Smith waiting back at the five-yard line. Again, Riker got a lot of this one. Wow. Beautiful punt. I'm assuming he was a punter and a kicker in high school. That was a beauty. Actually hit it too hard to bring it out to the 20-yard line with 43 seconds remaining for A&M. And they've got two timeouts. Yeah, you know, the, just the point is that A&M did not use a timeout there. Kind of gave Alabama for the field. Neither quarterback's been intercepted today. They each have a touchdown pass, and they'll just keep it on the ground. Moss. Yeah, Jimbo might have given away the strategy by not taking a timeout there, right? He'd like to get to halftime 17-10. That's what it looks like it's going to be. And a really good first half, but it's kind of like old-time SEC right now. The sledding's been tough on the ground for both teams and thus it's been the air game of Milrow 
and Johnson that's provided the points and the electrifying plays have come from Anaya Smith and the 12th man causing a lot of false starts for Alabama. Alabama is going to bring it from about the six yard line and weaving out is Kendrick Law and that's where Alabama will start. We welcome you back to the booth Brad and Gary Jenny down on the field Done a lot of Alabama games partner. I don't remember the ground yards being this hard to come. No, by. I think the five penalties the offensive line pre snap penalties means that they could Alabama got out of the running game. The tailback has only run the ball five times for 11 yards. That's produced the sacks for Texas A&M. 13 minus yards rushing when you add the sacks in and that's not going to work for Alabama especially when Nick Saban told us yesterday afternoon we got to be able to run the ball. Well they haven't so far. Remember Alabama's style of play so far this year they're the number one in the SEC in run plays, 60 percent of the time. Milrow throws to the outside complete this one's to Nye Black who is going to stretch himself out with that long body and pick up a first down at a pickup of about 12 as we take a look at our first half game trends Max Johnson efficient 151 yards the touchdown was to his brother Jake Jalen Milrow 161 Jermaine Burton was the big target for most of that and the offensive line four sacks as Gary talked about minus 13 yards five pre snap penalties and that's where we are as the third quarter offensively begins no row quick throw again out to about the 48 yard line yeah, I do understand though I mean there's no use you know hit your head up against the wall if you can't run the game you just can't lose the game proving you want to run the ball right. so Jalen Milrow is going to have to get better and more efficient throwing the ball short or they're going to be in trouble. Good start in the second half. Worked it almost out to midfield to just a couple of snaps. The team leading at halftime has won each game since AM joined the league from midfield second down at five. Backfield will empty. Milrow, a guy in his face, throws, still completed it to Isaiah Bond in a first down. Jenny? Yeah, Nick Saban said this team did not play well in that first half. He said that they're not getting off the field in third down, and they need to really clean up the penalties in the second half. As far as injury goes, defensive back Malachi Moore, he is out of the game with a lower body extremity injury. Now, as far as Hunter James Burnup goes, he actually came out of the field early during halftime. They're going to see what he's capable of. All right, Jenny, thanks. Will Rackett has filled in nicely. Malachi Moore is a big loss for sure. Milro waits and waits, throws late and complete to Bond again. Got collared around the neck. And this is a good looking drive to start things off. It is. Tyler Booker that time took on the blitzing linebacker, stood his ground, and produced the time for Milro to reload and throw the ball effectively short again. Good drive. Second out of three. Jalen. Quick throw to Bond again. So it was Burton in the first half and Bond quickly with a couple here in the third quarter. So that time the look off the slot was wide open right here and he went to the proper player. That had almost had to be a busted type look for that AM defense. That was a 15 yard cushion. Guys playing flag football would throw the ball to that one, right? I mean, <laughs> it's a little too easy. Already at the 28 yard line of the Aggies. In the shadows, Milrow, look out from behind. Down he goes, ball is out. Not sure who's got this. What a hit by Edrin Cooper. It might be Proctor, the left tackle, has saved the day. Did he get back on top of it? And Milrow, slow getting up as well. Hard to believe. Look at him this time. Coming right off the edge right here. Just comes in unblocked. His second sack of the day. Forced the ball out. So Edrin James, excuse me, Edrin Cooper is an inside linebacker. Always accounted for either by the offensive line or a running back on every play. Crowd now. Stirring it up. Alabama going to take a time. Everything. 
Bama wants to just get back into field goal range. Nope. Intercepted. First turnover. And it's Bryce Anderson with the pick of Jalen Milrow. The whole time, Bryce Anderson had his eye on the quarterback. Free safety in the middle of the field. What you do is look for those guys. He's got his eye right here on him the whole time. And as the tight end goes up the field, watch him wait, 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 and then close on the throw. That's how you play safety. Trying to get it to Eye Black. Uh, they faked the toss. Eye Black waiting on it, but nope. Bryce Anderson's first interception of the year in the return to the 35 yard line. So yeah. there goes the scoring opportunity for Alabama. And Alabama was down there for three points and came away with zero. Milro before that throw had been five for five for 39 yards. Now Max Johnson on the give to Amari Daniels for a couple. It's not like uh, a and is breaking any school records <laughs> running the ball either. You're no. right. <laughs> Pick up a two for Daniels, who stays in there with Max Johnson. From the 37, extra rusher coming. Johnson's got to get rid of it, and it is intercepted. I don't know. Might have yep, hit they're the going to say incomplete. And one, one referee said incomplete. One said he got it. I think Caleb Downs got it. <laughs> I, I think he thinks he got it. He thinks he's got it. <laughs> I freshman think. Tresman Marshall came on the hit and the freshman Marsh uh, the downs the see. Oh, I think he's got it. He did. Remember it was downs who got beat on the in and out, uh, up for the touchdown. But this time he closed on the crossing route on Jake Johnson. Big play by the freshman. It's a back to back interceptions. Surprised he could still yeah. wait that long. That was me right on the right side over there. <laughs> If you're wondering on the exchange of interceptions, it seems like Alabama's right where they started. Almost the case. They were at the 37 yeah. when Milrow was intercepted. But first and 10 instead of third and long. Exactly. Last drive, Alabama did not attempt one pass. So now they're at the 39 yard line. Trying something on the ground, and finally, Jace McClellan, the best run of the day, and he's still going. Yep, ran right by Edger and Cooper that time. Run blitz was in the hole, and McClellan ran right by him. Watch Cooper come over here and like passing like a train, zoom right by him. More positive yardage on that Jace McClellan run than negative yardage in the entire first half. He got 15. Two tight ends for Alabama. McClellan stays in there with Milrow. Crowd making it difficult again for the Alabama quarterback and front wall. They'll try McClellan again. Positive yardage this time as well. Got four. So a little bit of movement the last couple of snaps. We talked about last time it was third and long when Alabama threw the interception. They're averaging third and nine yards on third down. That's because they can't run the ball. Penalties and throwing from third and long has not worked. They're one for seven in the game. Still minus three yards rushing for the game, but it's been at least positive in the last couple of carries by McClellan. Second down and six. Milro throws to the outside complete first down at the 10 yard line is Isaiah Bond and I think it's going to be first and goal. Nope, they're going to put it at the 11. The Alabama offensive staff believed that if they could get to the secondary they would have success. What I mean is if they stay away from the sacks and long yardage like they saw the Miami tape. We feel we can get these guys if we have a chance to throw the ball. The tide can get a first down at the one. So it's first and 10 at the 11. No row, quick throw to the outside, and that got blown up by a guy that's been picked on today, Josh DeBerry, and he played that beautifully. Yeah, that's where you depend on your buddy to make the block. And this time, Malik Bainson did not get the block, 
and you hang it out, when you don't get that key block, you're going to lose yardage. Not only that, Isaiah Bond got one right in the bread basket with yeah. a helmet. And he's upset with his partner out there. Well, they came in 16 out of 17 in the red zone, but only nine of those were touchdowns. That's what they're looking for here to try to tie the game midway through the third quarter. Milrow all day long still hasn't run. Now he throws oh, late. He has wide open Burton. So and there's the problem we said he has those intermediate. He's been pretty good the second half though. And as you said, he had all day long for the first time all game. Beautiful job up front. Looks to Nilek on the right side of the formation. Covered comes all the way back and misfires. If he hits Burton in stride, it's a touchdown. But as you can see, it was nowhere close. Third down and 14. Again, they would have to get a first down at the one yard line. They are in Will Reichard's field goal range. Low snap. Miller had to go down to get it. Look out from behind. Throws. Got it to Burton. Touchdown, Alabama. I'll tell you, Jace McClellan that time picked up the blitz as the running back. Coming out of the slot, out of the secondary, McClellan comes right up here and stops the blitz, and that allows the time. Watch this block. Bang. Nothing. Nowhere to go. Gives him time to throw the ball, and it's a beauty. And you see the arm strength because he really didn't even have time to set his feet the way he'd like to, and he got that baby to Burton on a rope for a 15-yard touchdown. Will Rackard's extra point is They've slowed down the rotation out there, and they're going to the guys they believe in. I'll tell you one thing, somebody didn't believe in Tyreek Chappelle, number seven for A&M, chasing Burton across the field here. He's going, wait, wait, I haven't had to cover a guy this long in three games. What's going on here? <laughs> and from our AT&T 5G pylon cam, there's Jermaine Burton getting in the end zone for the third time this year. It's uh, you can cover those guys pretty well when the only quarterback only has a second half to yeah. throw, right? Yeah, when he's got six seconds, he's a little different. <laughs> a little harder. Total yardage pretty close. Halfway through the third quarter, we can't get any closer than 17 17. Three receivers to Max Johnson's left. So Le'Veon Moss in the backfield with him. Max looking that way, going complete. And about a nine yard pickup to Anaya Smith. Invesco brings you today's scholar athletes Malachi Moore who's injured in this game earlier for Alabama and Nick Constantino for Texas A&M Invesco proud to support student athletes on and off the field with a donation to both Alabama and Texas A&M's general scholarship funds. Yeah, you got to wonder when A&M would go back to Anaya Smith and Evan Stewart. They're two playmakers zero and number one. You got to get the ball to those guys. Try to pick up the first down here, and they will. Well, maybe not. Well, I thought he got forward progress past the I line. I thought so, too. Maybe on Moss. Moss coming off a 100-yard career-high day last week, 107. And he had passed the line. And so they move the sticks at the 36. So Bama has been going to their playmakers, Burton. Playmakers for AM, number one, number zero. Let's see if they can find him. Pistol set here with Johnson. He'll give it off. Moss trying to get to the edge. Cuts it back. Nice cutback run. And he got about nine more. Well, remember the run by Chase McClellan that kind of opened up the time to throw the ball. I wonder if this one could open up the running game, the passing game with Moss. Get it, gouge him for, you know, good gain, eight yards, was it? Yeah, yep. right around eight yards. Now you got a lot of options. Aggies from the 44 as we're under six minutes in the third quarter. Keep it on the ground, trying to push their way off that left side. This is somebody's hat came off. I think he got the first down if you look at the linesman foot. They should move the sticks again. Tim Keenan lost his helmet. He'll have to come out for a play. This is just push on push here, right at the first down marker.
fans have a little bit of a breather with their team on offense not making the same amount of rackets flags down well even with it being quiet the offensive lineman <laughs> were generally the time it's a&m number zero five yard penalty remains first well, down that might have been a nice call call for the play Smith. call yep might have been his ball like i'm going i'm gonna get a head start yep, here that was the wide receiver that not the line a nice one of the captains on this team and one of the guys that could have gone to the nfl said felt like we had unfinished business and i wanted to play another year with yeah, my guys. coming off that injury i think he was a smart move come back show the nfl right. you're you're ready healthy and make some big plays yeah, he missed eight games he didn't play in this game last year but he had a big part of two years ago when they won here moss Across the 45. Chris Braswell in on the tackle. Nia Smith, we talk about the weapon he is. 2,000 career receiving yards now. That does They played him at tailback. Yes. Played him in the slot. He's a great punt returner, a great kickoff returner. And he's one of those guys that's way over 3,000 yards of offense, no matter how he can do it. You want to get it in his hands. Max Johnson backpedaling throws and got it to Evan Stewart the other guy that Gary just well, talked about uh, Bobby Petrino kind of thinks old school the way I do when things aren't going well look up your best players and figure out a way to throw the ball to them and throw like that backing up as you said get nothing on that with his body it had to be all arm and corralled a little bit of I a know. touch on the ground there. And I don't see anybody stopping them, nope. so it's a catch. Third and two, though. Moss looked like he was going to give it back to Johnson. I don't think he got there. No, he didn't get close. And they remember, they were stopped on fourth down early in the game. Tough decision now for Jimbo Fisher. Yeah, this is a spot on the field where it can't be a field goal. And yeah, that again, that defensive line, that's what they do. Stuff the play and make the running back. Well, the fans are going to boo here, but they've got a punt. That's just not a bad, that's not a good spot. You go punter, <laughs> Constantino. We'll kick this one. And did it make the end zone? It did. It did. Nice attempt down there to try to save it. Anderson got in a diving attempt. It'll come out to the 20, though. This game is getting good. Got a whole quarter to go and a little bit left in the third. So Three deep breaths, and with each breath, he says the word free to himself. Jalen told me it helps him clear his mental space, allows him to move on. And as you saw, after that interception, he responded with that nice touchdown pass to Burton, guys. So it's working. No doubt, Jenny. Good call. Jalen's exhaling right now, too, but this time he runs with it and gets a first down across the 30. So the true freshman Caden Proctor who struggled early in the season few penalties early in this game but this time does a nice job pushing his guy Shamir Stewart past the quarterback and allowing Kalen Milrow to make positive out of a passing play. That's the first rushing play from the pass protection that has been a positive play for Alabama. Good enough for a first down for Milrow that time. And wow Cooper closed the door on Roydell Williams in a Hurry there. Jalen Milrow, we talked about the previous drive. When you get Cooper hitting you right in the kidneys yeah. like that, you're going to be flinching a little bit. And that's every timeout and every uh, delay or penalty. Jalen Milrow has been throwing and keeping his back loose during every time before he enters the field again. Under two minutes in the quarter. Milrow. Loads, oh boy. fires long, got a man out there. Burton's got it. Oh boy. All the way down to the 20 yard line. That was really easy. This time, remember the short passes on the last series? This time it's not a sprint, it's a stop and go on the play. Remember, short pass, short pass, short pass, stutter and beat him. Jermaine Burton having a career game right here and that at the College Station. And that matchup again, Josh DeBerry. That has been the matchup Alabama has been attacking and very successfully. Look at the numbers on Jermaine Burton. Almost 24 a catch, including a touchdown. That one was good for 46 yards. He has more catches in his game than plays last week. <laughs> Just about. Nicked a bit, nicked a bit a week ago, held them back, could have played, but wanted to save them 
for this game, I think that's a smart save. Boy, for plays like this. To go. First down, Alabama. Right at the 20 yard line after that big pass play from Milro to Burton. Aggies shifting on their defensive front. Alabama will keep it on the ground. Roydell Williams got about a yard and a half. Cooper makes another tackle. Final minute, third quarter. Jalen Milrow started in this game a year ago when Bryce Young was injured. He threw three touchdown passes in that game. Today he's got one interception, touchdown pass, some long balls to Jermaine Burton. And he's got his tied in the red zone again. Second out of ninth in the 19 to the end zone and overshot everybody. Hey, this Alabama offensive line so far this half, they've had the one busted well, uh, offensive line play where Cooper just plows in there and gets the sack. Other than that, up front, they've been holding their own so far. And Jalen Milrow has been throwing the ball so far pretty well. Third and long again. Let's see what happens. Last time they blitzed, didn't get there, and it cost them. Will they do it again? I say no. Third down and nine. Milrow looks to the sideline. He's got Nye Black, the tight end slash wide receiver in a slot to the left, and now the backfield empties. Milrow in a crossing route to Burton. Jermaine Burton, touchdown, Alabama. Nineteen yard strike on the run and catch. Burton broke a tackle to get there. Yeah, right now, Jermaine Burton, Jalen Milrow, they're owning this AM defense. Two open on an easy slant, third and long, and open by four yards. Hard to believe. And busts a couple tackles to put it in the end zone. And that short pass again delivered perfectly. Will Rackard's point after is up and good. Rackard to kick. Alabama with the lead now. And a fair catch called for. As we take a look at our four game changer, and lo and behold, who do you think? Maybe number three? Well, he's been the recipient of some really nice play calls, stop and goes, going deep, slants, cross the field, give everybody credit. The offensive line giving Jalen Milrow more time, but the thought was coming into this game and all around the SEC is that Jalen Milrow could not beat you throwing the football, that he had to run to beat him. He is beating this AM defense throwing the football. Second year in a row, he's thrown three touchdown passes in this game. First five, look at that. Yep. Most exactly like the total from the first month and a half. I don't know, that was a broken play, but Max Johnson makes positive yardage out of it. And that should bring the third quarter to a close. Well, it was a great third quarter by Alabama. 14 points, the big turnover by the freshman Caleb Downs, I think, really turned the tide for Alabama. Got in field was Texas AM a second down and three from their own 32, and they'll get the first down here. Jenny talked with Coach Fisher at the end of the quarter. Coach, the last few years this game has come down to the wire. How does this team respond in this moment? Well, I think we will. We just got to get our poise right here. We got a nice play there. Get a drive, get points on the board, get it tied up, go out and get a stop. They've hit a couple big plays. We're going to stutter and go there. and Got to stop the big plays and get back in groove. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. So a first down on the run to open up the quarter. Anaya Smith on the sideline right now. Max Johnson on play action. Going to run with it and dives <laughs> across the 40. Funny, I was listening to Jimbo Fisher talk about when Max Johnson, Johnson runs the football. He said, well, it's just the same as it's always been. When you're running as a quarterback, you think touchdown, no. First down, no. Get down. Get down. <laughs> and he said, I don't like him sliding either. When I played, I used to go head first. Well, you don't get hurt as much. He followed his coach in that one, I he guess, sure to did. get to the 40. Picked up three. And I Smith back in there now. Three wide out grouping all to Johnson's right. Oh, 
Max looking that way the whole time. Backpedaling, throws off his back foot and completes. Nobody open. And Chris Braswell gets to him and he hits the deck. Yeah, Deontay Lawson, number 32, did a good job of taking away that pass play. To read the coverage perfectly, it's a matchup zone that Alabama has run as long as Nick Saban has been coaching, whether it was at Michigan State, LSU, or Hill at Alabama. Big third down, four wide outs for Johnson. They're four of seven. Now they two, got to, their, two of four. Got their say. horses in to rush on the edge now. Braswell on one side, Turner on the other. Here they come. There comes Braswell. Johnson has to throw late, but he got it to Moss. Broke a tackle. Le'Veon Moss got a first down. It's incredible. Alabama couldn't have done any better with their pass rush. Max backs up again and throws off his back foot. Gets it ripped away the t-shirt, but did not stop AM from picking up a huge first down. Pickup of 11. The shirt went, but the body didn't. That's right. And it's a first down in Alabama territory at the 49-yard line. It was 15 and 41 were in there, weren't they? Coming, As well in turn. Coming from both sides. And this is Owens. To the 45. So if you're going to run the ball up the middle, your center has to control the nose tackle. That's the key to the Bama defense. Watch Bryce Foster right here this time. Does a good job of getting the C. Reaches and turns in Timmy Smith to make the play. Not easy to turn Tim no, Smith. No, it isn't. <laughs> Either direction. <laughs> so pick up a four, second down and six. Almost three minutes into the fourth quarter. Here they come. Johnson quick throw. Oh, the umpire made the play. And that's what Evan Stewart is saying. Yep. Get out of my way. Usually you want the umpire to move closer to the line of scrimmage after the snap to get out of the way. He stays back. He should close on the play a little bit, get out of the way, and that's what caused the incompletion. Russ Pulley almost had himself a reception there, the umpire. Yeah, you Ooh. really want the umpire to move close so that you've got that area to throw the ball into. Empty set. Max Johnson in the gun on third down and six. And no doubt will be under the gun on third down and six. Turner's coming again. Johnson going long. Man there. And Aya Smith, but it's broken up at the very last moment by Terry and Arnold. Well, Terry and Arnold came almost famous for getting the wrath of Nick Saban last week coming to the sideline. And this time he gets beat, but does not give up on the play. Not everything is perfect. Stays with it and makes the play. And Nia Smith said this week, we know what Coach Saban wants, and we've got something for him. And Terry and Arnold said, I've been here three years. I still don't know what he wants. <laughs> well, sometimes he <laughs> wants one thing. Sometimes he wants another. But I know what he wants on that one. Stay with it. The play's not over until the play's over. And Arnold did. Constantino to punt. Who laid McKinstry has been unable to return anything's just gotten out of the way for the most part today. And he's going to call an immediate fair catch on this one and field it around the 14 yard line. Now to see if they can close the deal. They haven't been able to run the ball. They'd love to go on a time consuming drive with a touchdown lead. They being Alabama. But we got a long ways to go. 11 44. Well, remember Nick Saban talking about this team is similar to that 2015 team. Only difference they had Derrick Henry in the backfield. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, they're trying to run it. McClellan's had some positive yardage in the second half, and Jace has got it out around the 18 or 19 yard line. You know, the game's so different now that it's the clock rules have changed the game. Coming into the fourth quarter, both teams had around 45 plays, 15 plays a quarter. So that means there's only about 15 plays left for each team right. to play in this fourth quarter, and AM's down seven. And they're down a man, too. I think it's Walter Nolan. One of their fine defensive linemen has got a sack today, one of their five. And he comes up limping. And he'll head out for at least a play unless he can walk it off and come back in. Out of Powell, Tennessee. Yeah, there he is. Number zero. Yep. 
Oh, yeah, it gets fallen on again. But the blocker's from the side. Usually it's not the guy that you're fighting with. It's somebody else from the other side. Or friendly fire sometimes. They're tangled up in there. Second down and six. McClellan stays in with Jalen Milrow. He's having a career game. He's looking for more. And he throws another strike across the 30 to guess who? Burton. Burton lost the ball, though. It, and it is Texas A&M football. Bryce Anderson again. Had an interception. Now a fumble recovery. Coming across. Plenty of time. Throws to the right guy. Forced out by Bryce Anderson on the play. And then... Damani Robinson is the guy who forced it out at the end. Anderson makes the play, and then Richardson pops it out. Jermaine Burton's wishing right now he would have just taken a knee right there and lost it trying to get a couple extra yards. So a golden opportunity for the Aggies. Yeah, very similar to the one. Remember when AM turned it over to Alabama and they stuck it into the end zone? Let's see what the Alabama defense can do. Can they get a stop now? Just when Burton had almost picked up his 200th receiving yard, he puts it on the ground. AM at I, the Alabama 29. That was one of those forced turnovers, those modern day punch outs that they do now. If you go to practice, you see him working on it all the time. Le'Veon Moss by Max Johnson will get the handle. And only got a tough yard, maybe. Nothing, basically. Tim Keenan in on the stop. The Alabama defense has held every opponent to either their worst day of offense or second worst day of offense all year. The Texas game was ugly. We all know that. But Quinn Ewers made some great throws in that game, you know, to, to really bust that game open. Remember, Malachi Moore, the captain of the defense from the secondary of Alabama, went out earlier this game and has not returned, and he's not in there to kind of help that back end of the secondary. Second and eight. Johnson pockets collapsing down he goes Turner is there so is a Boigby and, I, and again the coverage from that secondary you mentioned no Malachi Moore but watch the three on two right over here beautifully handled by Lawson switches off takes the next one nowhere to go at least in Mac Johnson's mind there was nowhere to go early and get sacked Dallas Turner, who came in fourth in the country in sacks, is added to that total today. The 51-yard field goal from right here. A&M needs at least five yards to make a reasonable field goal. To get a first, they need 15. Johnson has time. Delivers a strike to his brother. Short of the first down, but got it down to the 24-yard line. So four, Max, Max to Jake again. Yeah, four-man rush. That time on the outside, Dallas Turner drops. Delivered. Good zone. Make it play happen in front of you. Exactly what Bama did. I think both sides happy with that play right there. Randy Bond came in with the most field goals of anybody in FBS on the year. Added to that total. 12 missed, out of 16 today. Missed two last week, though. Can't this, afford to miss this one. This one from 41. And it's blocked by Alabama. And they're going the other way. And it's Chris Braswell down the sideline. Alabama scores. There's a flag down back in midfield. Let's see if it's all coming back. But first, we'll take a look at the block. I After think Braswell block, got it. Personal foul, blindside blank. Return team, 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Alabama. I believe Braswell not only blocked it, I think he, he caught it. He caught it. He blocked it. He caught it. And there's going to be, well, you don't see many guys block a kick and then take it on one yeah. hop like Chris Braswell just did. Watch right from right over here with Braswell. Watch this. Not only does he get in there, then boom, and then right First bounce grabs it off the ground, and then an unnecessary block from Dallas Turner. 15 yards behind the play. I know it's a nudge, but it's a blindside nudge. 
and it returned to a touchdown into what 38-7 yard line. Yep. Playing with a touchdown lead, just under nine to go. Alabama on offense. Jalen Milrow going for more and going to Isaiah Bond. First down. Well, we wondered if there was going to be an emergence of go-to receivers. We've got our answer, don't we? Yeah, Jermaine Burton and Isaiah Bond have done the job. 17-yard pickup on that one by Bond. And it moves it into Aggie land at the 46-yard line. And that puts Miller over 300 yards passing. Wow, game. and three touchdowns. Yep. Roy Dell Williams in the backfield with Milrow will get the carry up the middle ran into a wall including Torian York the middle linebacker. Well this is a must stop for this A&M defense. Clock is ticking down. Hard to move the ball anyway can't go down by more than a touchdown in this game. Two tight end set for Alabama on second down and eight. Uh oh. Uh, movement. Here we go. What's it? Second and 13. Number six. It's one of those tight ends. Ball start. Offense, number 81. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. So this is Dupree on top of your screen yep, there. CJ Dupree. Yeah. And backs it up just on the AM side of the 50. What is DJ Durkin dial up now? They bring five. Milro hangs in, throws a little high, and Bond had his hands on it. Yeah, he slipped and fell, and that threw it off that time. Right at the break, Isaiah Bond slips, then can't get up in time to get the ball. Watch this. Coming down, speed, stop. Slips and then can't get up and catch it. And Perfect Deuce, throw. Deuce Harmon with the push to make sure yep. he didn't come down with it. If he didn't slip, that would have been an easy catch, I think. Well, a huge third down for both teams. Offensively for Alabama, defensively for Texas AM. Well, here's three man front. Last time they tried this, it was a disaster. No penalty by Alabama. They flinched. Right. Going to be back on their side of the 50. False start. Offense number 77. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Jaden Roberts is the guy that jumped that time. So that time Nick Saban was saying that the nose tackle moved and that caused the movement. I think he's got a pretty good argument to tell you the truth. Last three losses suffered by Alabama. A lot of penalties. They've got double digits again today. Another oh. flag. Holy cow. Another one. That's the same guy, same problem. And now this 108,000 plus is going to go crazy on third down at 23. Let's see if again whether the AM defensive line move. Oh, that was just a small stem right there. That couldn't be called on AM. That was a misplay by Alabama. Keep it on the ground. Chase McClellan's going nowhere. It's fourth down and about 21. Well, the defense, with a little help from the Alabama offense, got the stop they needed. Well, AM is going to have plenty of time when they get the ball back offensively. And should be pretty good field position or better than it would have been. I mean, Alabama was on their end of the field until the penalty started cropping up. Now remember, Will Reichert is not normally the punter. James Burnup is, but he's been out since the first half with an injury. Reichert's done a really nice job, though, punting the ball. This one a high tallywagger, and it'll be fielded on a fair catch around the 16-yard line by Anaya Smith. Just to the 641 here in the fourth quarter. 
24-17. Remember, a touchdown taken back due to a penalty. And an illegal crackback block. And now cracking Max Johnson down to the deck is the defensive front of Alabama. Well, you remember that offensive line problems that L uh, Alabama had in the first half? Well, the second half, the problems are with the A&M offensive line. Yeah. And they're being overrun. Zero points in this half. Every throw that Max Johnson has thrown, he had to back up on to let the ball go. And they're controlling this defensive front for Alabama is controlling the football game in the second half. You saw that replay. Two offensive linemen falling backwards, getting run over by the Alabama front wall. Johnson goes down, and it's a safety. Well, the ball is actually out, too. But it's going to be at least two for number 92. At least two is the word. But... And it might be reviewed whether the ball came out because I think there was an immediate recovery by Alabama. I called safety first and touchdown second because Over of this. The field is an incomplete pass. Oh, he it's threw it. Grounding. True. But was Offense, he in the grass when he let the ball go? The foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, it's a safety. Uh, well, it's two. His knee was down, I think, or so was they called holding in the end zone? Is that what they called? Either way, it's either intentional grounding, holding, or his knee was down. Yeah, if you're it's holding in the end zone, it's a safety. I think we called intentional grounding as he let the ball go. Gene Steratore is with us. Gene? That is what Dan Gutro said, guys, that uh, he ruled that it was a forward pass prior to Johnson being down. That's the right call after looking at it. And because there is no receiver in the area, it's intentional grounding, which is a spot foul, and in this case would result in a safety. And that's what he ruled on the field, and that's a really good job of ruling that live on the field, fellas. I don't know how he got rid of that thing in the first place because yeah. he was getting decked by Eboigby. Well, I'll tell you, give that Alabama defensive line the win on that series. You're not kidding. Well, that's going to make it 26 to 17. Really, the whole second half, we've seen Max Johnson, every throw he's made, he's been backing up right now. I mean, he's been backpedaling when he's thrown the ball. Twenty six to seventeen and that's a comforting lead for Alabama compared to what they were at just a touchdown up and now a free kick coming up. And that will mean either Randy Bond or Constantine yeah, and, uh, and a big part of that obviously a nine point lead a two possession lead. Boy, kind of just rocked Santos that time number seventy one Chase Santos rocked him, just overpowered him. There was no trickery on that pass no. rush. So it's going to be Randy Bond, the kicker. You have the option to kick or punt this. Bond will kick off. Kendrick Law and Roydell Williams are waiting around the 20-yard line on the other end for Alabama. That's a nice kick. It's Kendrick Law from the 9-yard line. Side steps one tackler swarmed under as he got across the 30 and that's where Alabama with a nine point lead and 548 to go coming up before we're done. It's a play of the game presented by Jersey Mike subs. I would think maybe number four would be involved with his lead holds. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd pick him as my player of the game. <laughs> Listen, you're going in the huddle or if you're the coaches, you're telling your playmakers, the guys who have the ball, okay? Hold on to the ball. Yes, we want first downs, can end the game. No turnovers, no penalties. Let's do it clean and see if we can put this game away if you're Alabama. The no penalties has been a problem. They've had too many. They'll keep it on the ground. Chase McClellan got two or three. AM's got all their timeouts remaining. And the clock winding down under five and a half. Smart play. Use that play clock. Meanwhile, the Aggie defense that was so stout in the first half knows they need a stop for Jimbo Fisher. Trying to force a third down and long or get off the field, give it back to their offense. Blitz coming from the corner. McClellan will just run it in the middle of the pile for a yard or so, and that's all. It will be third down and about six. 
But we're under five minutes. Jimbo Fish has decided not Well, this is a stop they've got to have right here. Alabama comes in with their receiver group here, but do they throw it on third down and six, or does maybe Jalen Milrow take off on his own? He hasn't run much today. He's going to have to run for his life here. Well, he's very fortunate to hold on the ball that time. Dewani Richardson. Watch from the, the secondary. Watch him try to swat the ball out of his arm as he got his hand as he comes through. Coming from the left side. Swats at it. Oh, just tucked just in time by Milrow. And Cooper was there as well. So now it's a punting situation where we'll record again. And the sixth sack of the day. And Anaya Smith, remember, took one coast to coast last week. He almost did it here earlier today. Comes up, has to call a late fair catch around the 36 yard line. So 337 on the shoulders of Max Johnson. Nothing strategy will work if they can't block that front, though. He throws late a wobbler, almost intercepted, intended for his brother Jake. And somebody got a hand Same on it. Same matchup. Roswell pushes Chase DeSantis right in to Max Johnson. Prior to the pass, holding defense number nine. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. So a defensive holding penalty. Yeah, Trey Amos is in the game because of Malachi Moore hurt in the first half. And he was working on Evan Stewart, and yep. it was holding. And that was obvious. So first down at the 46. Johnson, deep sideline, too far, intended for Jake Johnson. And again, Max had to pick himself up off the turf, and again, a flag. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 41, forcible contact to the quarterback's head and neck area. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. And as many great plays as 41 has made today, that's not a good one. So two big penalties, one by Dallas Turner on the touchdown run by Braswell, and now this one by Braswell himself. Remember, it's only 10 more yards to get in the field goal range for AM. There it is, hit to the head. So they're all the way to the 39 yard line by penalty. And they haven't, they haven't done anything right. yet. Johnson loads, throws oh, complete. Oh. Anaya Smith, Anaya Smith down the sideline and in. Touchdown, AM. Thirty-nine yards on the catch and run. The Alabama corner, not sure who it was, went for the ball instead of making the tackle. Yeah, it was McKenzie right there. Kool-Aid McKinstry goes for the ball to try to knock it out. Instead of making the tackle, turns into a touchdown. And he did not step out. Nope. They're looking at it again. Did his toe scrape before he got there? I think his right toe might have scraped. Right there. Gene's oh, you can't tell on that look. Nope. Can't tell at all. Gene Steratore is with us, but unless we get a different look, I don't know if Gene's going to have anything we don't have. Does his I'll right. Tell you what, guys, from one peak oh. I got, I felt the same thing. You got a pretty good look there from our low end zone. And I think that right foot definitely slides in the white. Now the question or the, what they'll look for where is where is that football? Right. Yeah, Gary, where is he extending? I think we might be just. Both of those elements in, there's a great shot by our camera guys so it's right there. Be almost really looks like right one and a half yard line is the call. That right toe, he looked like he was in until the third look. That's a big play for Bama because it buys time. Mitchell Wilkins is our replay official as we get another look. Elias digging up some dirt right there that he wishes he had back. 
Uh, what an effort. Yeah, Kool-Aid went for a strange play there. Tried to snap it out of his hand and ended up releasing it down the sideline. The runner's right foot touched out of bounds prior to the ball crossing the goal line. The ball be placed at the two-yard line. First and goal, Texas A&M. So it's a 37-yard pickup and first and goal outside the one. Yep, there it is one more time. And this, I think, forces A&M into throwing the ball. They can't afford to run the ball because they need to keep their timeouts. So if it's not good, at least the clock will stop. Crowd doesn't like it, but call was the right one. But still a huge play. I think at least the first two calls by A&M will be pass plays. Just outside the two, first and goal. Remember, the clock will start before the snap. The referee will wind the clock because of the new timing rules. Ernest Kronauer is in as a fullback in an eye backfield. He's caught two passes this year. They were both touchdowns at the two-yard line. Johnson throws incomplete. Closest guy was Noah Thomas. Second and goal. And Aya Smith comes in. Crown Hour comes back out. Noah Thomas. Anania Smith to Max Johnson's right. Evan Stewart to the bottom of the screen to his left. And they're going to run it. And it's going to be Holden. A flag. I think Noah Holden, Thomas tells. Offense number three. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Remain second down. And remember, this is all costing time. Eventually, AM may have to kick a field goal to get it within one position. But watch, right side, watch the hold. Grabs him with his right hand. Easy call. Twisted him. Could not make the play. Jalen Key would, might have been able to make the play. Yeah, it was holding. <laughs> remember, a couple of plays ago, we were saying touchdown, and Ia Smith. Now they're back at the 12 yard line. Still have to throw the ball, get it into the end zone. Smith's a slot man to the right on second and goal from the 12. Johnson in trouble. Got away momentarily, but not the second wave. And Braswell is there again. Now, so is Keenan. Now Jimbo has to decide whether he's going to burn a timeout or it costs him 40 more seconds. I'm surprised he's not going field goal here. You've got to make it a one possession game. Third and goal. We're down to two and a half minutes. Taking their time on the snap to Johnson. Has time. Far side to his brother. Down to the two yard line. Now it's still fourth decide. and goal. Now you got to decide what do you do? Field goal, timeout. Nice throw and catch, but it's still fourth and goal at the two. Yep, what a which stop. is where we who's hit a couple of times today. This should be a chip shot from 20. And whoo, just inside the upright on the right side. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Close to the ball and aiming to the right. And then he's gonna let the other guy kick it back the other way, but it's fielded by Kool-Aid McKinstry. Blair Zapata. The backup kicker, they tried the old right and come back to the left. Didn't work. McKinstry, good hands. So McKinstry had an opportunity to make a tackle and elongate that drive, but this one, very nice. So Alabama's got it. AM is down to two timeouts, 2 11 to go. Alabama with a lead. Alabama will take the lead if they win this game in the SEC West Division standings, and that puts you on the inside track to the road to Atlanta. 
as AM and everybody else will have at least one loss, but we still have a couple minutes to go. Well, if and they stop them three times, they would get the ball back about 110 left. On the ground, McClellan stood up by Cooper immediately, got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. 30 seconds timeout here will be right years Alabama has even come into October with a loss you can see their record in October and against unranked teams in the last 15 years and so on and so on and that's down to 208 that last play only took three seconds before the timeout here's a toss sweep to McClellan trying to follow his blockers and trying to hold on to the ball maybe got four yards and now we're at the two minute mark. So I don't think there'll be any temptation for Alabama to throw the ball. The way their defense is playing, you got to trust them. Today, I think the question with two minutes to go has been answered, Gary. Sure has. He found a go to receiver, even though he was under immense pressure in the first half. He took those deep breaths and delivered. <laughs> the deep breaths he talked to Jenny about. Everybody taking a deep breath right now. AM's out of timeouts. Milrose in trouble. Going to throw and complete it to Chase McClellan. Did he catch that? If he did, it's a first down. It's a tremendous play, isn't it? Might be the play of the game right there. Let's it, see. His knee his was down, yes. And the knee oh, comes up oh, as he yeah, double clutches. He, wow, Does that change things? Look at that. If he'd have caught it clean, it would have stopped right there. What a play. Gene Steratore has confirmed that that's the rule. And yeah, this one's a one hopper. Let's go back to a second. Gene, that is one of the rare things you don't ever see. That's a first for me, guys. I haven't seen one like that. It's kind of an assist by himself to himself, right? So it's just a touch. Nobody's down there. Possession, as you said, both the knees up. Play on, big first down. Wow. That was a little bit of everything. I think Jalen Milrow made a big mistake right there throwing the ball. I mean, the game is basically over if he takes knee on the play. That's what Coach Saban is stressing right now on the sideline. Well, I lost track of it down early. It can happen. I mean, it's uh, he made a mistake and. You know, now should still be able to get out of this. Going to be second down at 10. A&M is out of timeouts. There's 96 seconds left in the game and two more plays in between. If good throw would have been nice, but the, sometimes when you throw the ball, you don't throw it well. Three knees would end. Why the game. are you throwing it? Yeah, first I place. just lost track of what was going on. Well, if he lost track, the offensive coordinator and the coaches lost track. So now if he takes two knees, there'll be roughly 10 seconds to go in the game before he could have iced it. There's the numbers on Jalen Milrow. Career highs all the way across the board. Second down and 10. And we got motion again. Going to be on C.J. Dupree, I think. Start. Offense, number 81. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Penalties, penalties, penalties. It's been a problem in their recent losses, without a doubt. And we got a little shoving going on at the end. And the players themselves separate. 14 penalties against Alabama for 99 yards. Low snap. McClellan only going to get about a yard. And the clock will run. Nine pre-snap penalties. How about that? Out of the 14. And they should win the game. They should have won the game on the block field goal <laughs> had they not had a illegal chop block. And for Jimbo Fisher and the Aggie fans, that clock's moving too fast. And for the Alabama fans in Tuscaloosa, it's not moving fast enough. Third down and 14. McClellan cuts outside behind blockers. 
And got it it's to the 35 yard line. So there's going to be about well, what seven seconds left under seven. Do you risk I running, don't running they, around to try I to waste seven seconds? I don't think they will punt the ball, but they've got a very valuable veteran player in Reichert back there. I would think that they could kind of run to the side and just throw it real high and kill the rest of the clock. We're going to find out. It's fourth down and eight, which is immaterial right now. It's the clock. Remember, if, you know, three straight knees, game's over. Right. So they wouldn't have thrown that mistake. Pass. Yeah, mental mistake, the first play. So there it is, stopped at seven. Alabama takes a timeout. Out there yakking around that huddle. So remember the the off. You could just you, that offensive line. Just could they hold up a little bit so Milrow can run around and then throw it as high as he can. Here we go. Milrow running to his right. Throws it not high enough maybe. That is it. They did get enough time to run around and throw deep. Unless they the put a second was back on. The tackle box and the ball crossed the line of scrimmage. The game is over. The game is over. Alabama survives on the road here against Texas A&M, 26 to 20. This is a good game. Some mistakes that were costly. Some huge plays by both teams. First half defense was exceptional for the Aggies. The second half defense exceptional for Nick Saban and Alabama. Yeah, but the difference maker in this game, Jalen Milrow stepped up and played like a lot of people did not think he could. Yep, no doubt. Three touchdown passes, career highs all the way across the board. And we'll take you through the last play and the clock. They needed to burn seven seconds. Jalen Milrow blew about five of them before he put it in the air. And time runs out as it goes out of bounds. And Alabama goes to five and one. Goes to a top the SEC West at 3 and 0 and Jenny's with the coach. Coach, you're now the leaders of the SEC West. How did you find a way to win out there in that tough battle? Well, I think our guys did a great job of showing a lot of tenacity. Um, by the way they played in the second half, we had to overcome a lot of adversity, uh, a lot of calls, you know, that we kick ourselves in the foot getting penalties and, you know, helping the other team, which is something we need to eliminate. But this is a great win. This is a tough place to play. They got a good team. I'm really proud of the way our guys competed in this game. Congratulations, Coach. All right, Jalen, you're here and just took down one of the top defenses in the country. What does that do for your confidence as you're going out there and competing with these guys? Yeah, um, we had the knowledge that they were a great football team. Um, it took a lot of preparation going into the week, um, playing in a tough environment, playing against a tough opponent. Um, so we knew, you know, coming to the game, it was going to take all 11, 11 guys. Um, you, you come to college to play a game like this. It was fun. Um, I'm very glad, you know, we came out with the win and uh, roll tide. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.